All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So I'm going to be reviewing Last of Us Episode 4. So we're up to Episode 4 now. Um, almost at the halfway point of the show because there's only nine episodes. Um, I think this show would have been much better uh, at about 12 episodes, maybe 65 minutes, um, maybe 65, 70 minutes each. Because uh, at this point, I do feel like they're rushing past a few scenes and not letting everything just marinate and uh, not staying in certain moments that I feel like they, they should uh, stay in and not fleshing out certain things, right? So let's get into uh, episode four, okay? So this is probably the weakest episode so far, right? Even though I didn't, agree with the direction that uh, episode three went in with uh, Frank and um, Bill with with I, I I like that they did the backstory, but I didn't like that. They also gave the connection with Joel and Ellie. They, they you know, they deviated from that. But at least that episode was actually well directed. And it was like for what it was, it was a good ep a good episode. It just wasn't what we wanted it to be or what I wanted it to be. Right. So, start off this episode, um, Ellie, Ellie's, you know, practicing or playing with this gun. She's very enamored by it. She's smelling, you know, the, the bullets and inside of the gun and everything like that. Um, this, this gun that she found in, in the uh, last episode. Um, and by the way, shout out, shout out to the set designers of this show. Like, the bathrooms, Ellie was in this bathroom with this gun. And the bathroom looked like straight, like, looked like the bathroom straight out of the game. So... The set designers probably took a whole lot of time with perfecting that and everything else in this world. Um, and then we get to see the Ellie pun book. You know, Ellie whips out the, the pun book, the joke book that's in that's in the game and starts throwing jokes at Joel while he's like siphoning gas out the car and everything like that. And we get the uh, the gay porn mag um, um, moment that we get after they they leave us uh, uh, Bill in, in the game. Um, so there's the, you know, the gay porn mag joke with this, with the sticky pages and everything like that. And that's like one-to-one, -one, uh, recreated. So it, it's funny, like certain, there's certain moments, um, in the show that they perfectly recreate, but there's other things that I feel like are just as important to recreate and they don't do it. And then you got some people making excuses like, oh, it did, you know, they don't have to recreate you know, these uh, iconic moments. Well, they do it for other moments because they obviously felt like it was important, right? And I'm going to be real with you. Like, I don't think this this was like a, a, me a memorable moment in the game. But like, if you ranked it, I, I can rank way higher important moments that they haven't, that they decided to not recreate, especially in the last episode. Uh, so, okay, sure. Um, so anyway, they're traveling, right? Joel, they got the car from Frank and Bill's. They're, they're driving, uh, for a while, uh, and trying to get to Wyoming to get to, uh, Tommy and everything like that. Long drive. They pull over, you know, uh, they pull, Joel pull, pulls over in the forest, camp out for the night. They eat some Chef Boy RD. Chef Boy RD is, uh, you know, all, all these canned foods are obviously have, well, they, 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 they're definitely expired, right? But, I mean, they're they're the things in it that you would have to rely on the most uh, in in the world, um, because even though because after things expire, you could technically still eat them. Not saying you should, uh, but you know what is it? The enzymes in the food break down and all that, so it's not going to taste taste the best and may not be the best for you. Whatever all that is. So yeah, they're eating Chef Boy RD, um, and this is a Ellie and Joel relationship building episode. You can see Joel's guard start start to come down and he starts to like connect with Ellie and everything like that and bond with her a little bit especially after that letter that uh Frank uh that that Bill left him last episode so this is a this was the episode where his his wall really starts to come down and he starts to let Ellie in a little bit and starts to show that he cares for her a little bit even though uh during the drive he says no Ellie you're not family you're you're cargo um you know he calls her cargo which is pretty damn cold um, so, you know, while they're about to go to sleep and everything in this forest, you know, she, he, 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 you know, he's kind of teaching her certain things of survival. Like, 
no, they can't make a make a make a fire, um, you know, because of the smoke and people might see it. You know, you don't got to worry about clickers or or infected or in general in this remote area in the forest. Uh, that's typically not where they're located. So he's just, you know, teaching her, teaching her the ropes and everything like that. And when they're about to go to sleep, you know, Ellie asks Joel if it's safe. And she's, he's like, yeah, you don't got to worry about nothing. We're good out here in this remote forest. Um, but then he looks up at the forest and he sees all the trees and the darkness and gets a little paranoid. So he pretty much, you know, stands guard. It seems like almost like the whole night, um, you know, guarding over Ellie and everything like that. Um, so Joel makes coffee and this is obviously a theme from the, uh, a reference from the game. Joel absolutely loves coffee in the game. Like in last of us one and two, they talk about like Joel would, would trade insane things to people for coffee. He would probably like train trade guns and other stuff he had just for some coffee. Um, so he absolutely loves it. And Ellie thinks it's disgusting. I mean, I'm, I'm with Ellie on that side on, on that. I do think coffee in general is disgusting. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker uh, unless it's like, you know, the the caramel, the very light caramel stuff, right? That that black coffee or however people uh, drink it, where, where it's very like coffee in its purest form. People like to drink it like that. I think y'all are serial killers. But yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, they're in the car driving. To, uh, Joel talks to Ellie about different things like Tommy and everything like that. And he describes Tommy as, uh, you know, someone who's a joiner, someone, somebody who wants to be a hero. He wants to save the world all the damn time. And that's the problem, uh, which is why, you know, at the beginning in episode one, we saw Tommy, he's a, he's a war, he's a, he's a war vet. You know, he joined the army, uh, you know, um, he joined the army. And then after the, you know, the world, the, after the outbreak, he uh, learned about the fireflies uh, joined the Fireflies, you know, so he's somebody who's always who always joins a crew, always feels like he has to be a hero and all that. And that's that's his damn problem. Um, So, you know, little backstory on uh, on Tommy there. Uh, so Ellie falls asleep. And by the way, this is obviously a scene out of the game, too. She falls asleep. Joel tells her to get some sleep. She falls asleep. Fake asleep ever. This is one of the points like like what I was saying, like Bella Ramsey still needs to work on her acting chops because nobody was convinced that she was asleep. Like that was, that was bad. Like <laughs> she opens her eyes and looks like she was never asleep. There's no grogginess, no gradual, you know, wake up. Like she just looked like, yeah, I'm, I'm, Oh look, I'm pretending to, she looked literally looked like she was pretending to be asleep. Okay. Whatever. Fine. Um, so they end up in Kansas city, right? In the game, the ambush scene, happens in Pittsburgh, right? Cool, no problem. They see the burned bodies and and well, they don't actually see them. The camera pans to it. We see it. We see the burned bodies, you know, in the QZ which are which I believe were like federal officers because the hunters are civilians who rebelled against uh Fedra and like took over whatever, took over the area and everything like that. So hunters are just, you know, re rebels that um particularly uh, you know, went against um went against and rebelled against uh Fedra and, and won. Um and this was one of the most the, the the ambush scene in The Last of Us is one of the also one of the most iconic scenes where, you know, uh Ellie and Joel are driving, somebody hurt comes out into the road pretending to be hurt. Joel, you know, is experienced. He's been there before, as we know, he's been on both ends, so he recognizes it. We don't get the line, you know, where he says you know, where Ellie asks him, okay, are, are you going to help him? And he says, he ain't even hurt. We we don't get that line. Okay, no, it's it's a pretty good line. They That's what I'm saying. Like, there's other things they make sure that are said in the show, but this line, they don't say it. And it's like, oh, he didn't even say that line. Well, everybody knows that line. Okay, fine. Um, think still, still think he should have said it. And listen, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not, I, I think us who played the game, well, most of us who played the game, I don't think we're going to be able to separate our desire for the, for certain things in the game to be in the show. I just don't, and I don't think we should have to, I, I, I'm not saying we should, that we should expect everything to be one-to-one, -one, but we should desire that authenticity for the source material, right? Um. 
where it where it makes sense, and I feel like a lot of the things that I've been complaining about um are the things that should be in there that that do make sense. Um, you know, and, and people want the source material from uh, you know, from whether when they're watching a show that started as a book or uh whether it's a started as um, you know, a game or whatever medium it originally started as, yeah, people want that authenticity or for it to just be delivered with respect or or improve upon it. And sometimes that's not being that, that's definitely not being done in this ep- in this episode in my opinion because this ambush scene was weak. This ambush scene was trash. Like they they are hiding the violence in this show and I don't understand why. I think Neil Druckmann did say um they're not like going to have an overabundance of violence. Uh, because when it happens, they want it to like really be exceptional. They want it to stand out, which is cool. I don't got no problem with that. But my thing is, if there is violence, if there is a violent event happening, show the violent event. Why? Why are there so many cutaways and off off screen violence happening? We don't get to see none of it. This is this is some this is on, this is, you're on HBO Max. Some of the most violent shows happen on HBO on HBO Max, and this is this is the platform for you to show this type of violence. So, even the way the action is, some of the action is like directed and choreographed. I'm like, what what is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, Joel gets in the shootout with these hunters, and it's like three of them, I think. Um, in the game, it's like maybe six, seven. Okay, cool. It don't got to be like the same amount in the game because that's for gameplay purposes. Um, but there's not even the scene where, you know, the, the guy grabs Joel, throws, tries to throw his head in, in, in the freezer and, uh, you know, there's the broken glass right there. That would have been, that would have been cool. Okay. But fine. He's in the shootout with a couple of these guys and you don't really get to see, there's no like intimate shot of him engaging them really. Right. It's like this far off camera shot from behind Joel. And you kind you see the guys, and you see him hit one of the guys, but it's like just very disconnected, right? It's not, it's not very involved, and I, and I kind and I kind of hate that. If you're going to show the violence, show the violence, like up close and personal. And I, I just and I just don't see why the, why they're doing it. They're they're hiding, and they're shying away from the violence. Why have a shootout if you're not gonna? properly show the shootout like every time there's a violent scene an action scene they like focus on joel or they focus on ellie and the camera's pointed to joel and ellie and and you're not seeing what's actually happening and what they're how they're engaging the enemy that much even in the last episode with with bill with the when the raiders came most of that most of that we didn't see we saw like the flamethrower trap i think it was the, the flame traps they fell into that and we saw Bill, you know, out on the street shooting at them. But once again, the camera's pointed at Bill. Not, it's not a camera shot where you can see, where you can really see both. So, and and then it it focuses on Frank while while these dudes are getting bombed outside. It's focused on Frank. Like, why are we not seeing that? I want to see these dudes get 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 nuked. I just, I'm like, man, come on, man. And you can't tell me, oh, you, and and people will com- will say, oh, it's it's about the story. You just want to see some action and a whole bunch of killing. I'm like, bro. You know, Last of Us is a violent story, right? One of the major themes of Last of Us is violence. That's that's a major theme. That is what Last of Us is largely about, is violence in this post-apocalyptic world, in this dystopian future. It is about violence. So why are they not showing the violence? I don't get it. So, yeah, a whole bunch of cutaways, a whole bunch of off-screen violence. Um... And one thing that was really weird is, <laughs> is, is like the Joel, Joel shoots one of the guys, and the guy walks out into the open. Now, a lot of people might have not noticed this. The guy walks out into the open to check on his guy that got shot. Like, bro, you're in the open. You, he just shot your man from from that exact spot, and you walk out to check on him. I, I, that that didn't make much sense. Cause like if. If you, if you, and he didn't know exactly, like he couldn't see Joel at that point. So how do you know he's not going to hit you right after you walk out there to check on your mans? I'm like, all right, man, whatever. Okay. And I'm okay with suspending, 
some belief. But, you know, Neil Druckmann and Craig Mazin, they, they're, they're, they're attention to detail whores, right? They pay very close attention to detail. So I'm like, all right. And then they're doing like these voice lines that are straight out of the game <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't really fit. You motherfucker. Like, it's... like no, it, it literally, because that's what they do in the game. Like, you know, they just scream random uh, obscenities, you know, when you take down one of their guys, especially in Last of Us Part Two. Uh, OK. Um, and this scene was it, it was kind of over so quick. They like just glanced past it and I'm like, nah, that wasn't it. That wasn't it, man. That wasn't it. I was disappointed in this ambush scene. That ambush scene was was dry. That was wax sauce. Okay, I I, I did not like it. Um. So one of the uh, one of these guys, you know, comes in the door, kind of gets the drop on on Joel. I wasn't. I didn't even find it believable that this guy was more powerful than Joel. Um. You know, Joel got that old man strength, but he is younger though. So maybe you know that 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 youth. Joel is like, what did he say, 52, 53 in this show? Um, so Joel and and uh, and Joel is younger in the game. So okay, cool. I, I could I could I could believe that. You know, youth, youth, you know, is overpowering uh Joel. That's cool. Um so he gets the drop on, on Joel, and Ellie has to essentially uh come save him. And this is similar to the hotel scene where the guy gets the drop where the guy gets the drop on Joel and he's like He's and he's drowning Joel and Ellie has Ellie has to save him. Um and Ellie just uh Ellie shoots him. Um and so he she saves Joel and you know the uh the the, the hunter starts begging for his life because he's honestly just a kid. And I like that because he's you know, they're humanizing this this random uh this random hunter and they're showing you that all these people are human. They're not just like you know how like a whole bunch of shows and games have like just a million thugs no name thugs like they just called up a hotline and be like hey i need a i need a random goon for you know a random goon to be shot you know they're just not people they're kind of just props that's how they treat a lot of these uh these people that die in movies or games they're they're more props than anything but you know just like in the game they try to humanize these 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 people um and show you that they're just survivors and they're just human too and this kid is begging for his life and yeah, that was that was that part was good, especially since like in The Last of Us, you can actually, you know, um, if you if you kill everybody else and leave one person and and you injure the last person, they'll they'll literally beg for their life. Um, so I, I do like that. And Joel tells Ellie to go in the other room and, uh, and you know, he stabs he stabs the kid. You know, it, it was it was, a I guess, a mercy, a mercy, mercy kill. He doesn't want Ellie to Ellie to see it and everything like that. Um, and Ellie is a little bit emotional and, and she's rattled after she had to, uh, shoot this, shoot this hunter. Um, I think she paralyzed him. Um, and then one thing, well, that happened a little bit later. So then we get to see Kathleen or as people are calling her, uh, Karen, right. you know, she's leader, she's Karen leader of the hunters. Um, and she has a doctor hostage, and for some, well, we know now, she's, she's searching for Henry and Sam, mainly Henry, uh, because Henry has something to do with her brother being killed. Henry, like, snitched on her brother or something like that. Um, and the doctor that she has captive actually delivered Kathleen. Like, he, you know, helped uh, birth Kathleen. Um, so they have a long history history there. Um, in the, in that town, I guess before Fedra even took over, you know, before the pandemic and all that stuff. Um, and people, and, and, and from what I've gathered, people aren't really very fond of Kathleen and her performance so far, because it's not, people don't find it convincing and believable. And it's not that, a, it's not even that she's a woman because we've seen very intimidating women. It's just that her demeanor, her way of speaking, her attitude is not commanding. I'm like I and and maybe in the next episode we could see why she's the leader but b based on this first this episode this first episode with her I can't imagine why or how she would be the leader of all these of all these people and why they would listen to her like I said she just doesn't have that commanding presence at all you know Tess has Tess has a commanding presence Marlene has a commanding presence we've seen many uh 
women in, in other in other games and media just have that commanding presence where you can tell they're they're a leader. She se- literally just seems like a Karen who would ask for the manager. Like before the outbreak, she's definitely asking for the manager. She's def she's definitely like if you if you if you pass a note in class, she's calling your parents. And she, if she's the teacher, she's calling your parents and telling on you, bro. She's calling the cops on you if you jaywalk. She's that. That's what she comes off as. It's, it's just not convincing. Um, but like I said, maybe in the next episode, we see something different and we realize, oh, that's why she's in charge. But I doubt it. Um, so. Yeah, so but I was going to say maybe they just wanted to go against the stereotypical brute manly villain who's in charge you know because that is a stereotype the same type of villain arc the the same villain archetype villain you know because i I wouldn't consider these people i want to stay away from calling these people villains uh they're survivors and everything like that um but you get what i'm saying they i think maybe they wanted to get away from that type uh because it's kind of predictable but anyway so they find trying to remember uh so yeah the so perry by the way uh tommy's voice actor in the game uh what what is his name i can't remember his 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 name um the voice the voice actor starts with a j or something like that uh but anyway i'll look it up but yeah he's playing one of the uh one of the hunters i I pretty much her second in charge um and yeah jeffrey 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 pierce so he's playing like the, the the commander second in charge to Kathleen, and you know they show her the bodies um, of who Joel Joel just killed and everything like that, and she thinks I think she thinks Tommy I mean uh uh Henry has something to do with it, so she she goes and offs the doctor, regardless of her reason reason offing a doctor in the apocalypse is insane. That is. Cr- crazy that is wild okay offing a a doctor is literally like gold in human form in this in this setting in this world you offing a doctor are you insane like that's wild maybe maybe the rest of the hunters in the next episode rebel against her because she's they realize she's obsessed with finding like this seems very personal right like I don't it doesn't seem like the the other hunters have a real stake in finding in finding uh Henry and Sam like why you know like what do they really have what's their dog in this fight this seems like mainly personal and she's just using them um so maybe they rebel against her um because she's making dumb decisions like she killed the doctor and what I'm about to get to she ignores the sinkhole with that the infected are going to come out of. And she's like, she's like, oh yeah, well, let's deal with that later. And let's just hunt the hunt the black dudes. Like during black history month, by the way, we got a, we got a, we got a white woman hunting two black men during black history month. I just want to put that out there. Cool. No problem. Um, just putting that out there, but yeah, just killing that doctor was, was wild. Um, you could have listened, you, you, you could, do a lot with a lot with that doctor you know even if you wanted to trade him or something like that to another to some other people i don't know he he's valuable he's valuable alive even if, even if you don't want to keep him yourself he's valuable alive so that's that's just kind of crazy unless maybe you got another doctor in that in in that town whatever um so we go to now we you know we go back to Joel and Ellie um Joel teaches Ellie how to handle a gun uh, you know, he's more sympath- sympathetic that Ellie had to shoot this guy in the in the previous scene. And I, and, and this is different from the game, because like in the hotel scene. Um, Joel gets mad at Ellie, even though she just saved his life, which I always kind of thought like I, I get why. But I always thought thought it was kind of dumb, like he's very prideful. Like, no, I, ha- I had that handle. No, my nigga, you were about to die. Your head was literally underwater and you and be, you were being choked to death and you couldn't reach your gun you were definitely about to die bro um so i do i do actually do like that change um even though i think ellie should have showed more emo- emotion in in the show when she did shoot that kid she cried but i just wasn't really convinced but i do like this change where joel isn't necessarily mad at her 
um, for doing it. He's a little bit more sympathetic and he, you know, just taught her how to handle the gun. Uh, so then, you know, Karen or Kathleen, whatever you want to call her, she goes into the room. Uh, Jeffrey Pierce's character brings, I think his name is Perry in the show, uh, brings her to the room. Um, well, the, well, he brings her to a room that they find food, canned foods and everything like that. And, and, and pictures obviously by, you know, left, uh, where, where Sam, uh, Henry and Sam were there because they're tracking them. Then he brings, brings them to a sinkhole or this floor that's coll collapsing. And the infected, as we know, are probably going to come out of this hole like the locust or lambent from Gears of War. Uh, so it, it seems, I don't know exactly. They're, obviously, infected can't just like live literally underground. There has to be space. There, it has to be like some type of basement lower than that floor that that the infected are. There has to be something like they're they're just living under there and and uh, uh and and then the the floor above them is is collapsing and then they're going to crawl out from from underneath it um i don't think we've necessarily seen anything like that in the game but it's it's you know it's just it just seems like that's the bottom floor so it's like what's below that that they're going to come out of there right it's but it's probably like a basement area or whatever um so yeah, she pretty much says like, "Oh yeah, seal off, seal off the building. Um, we'll deal with that later. Let's focus on Sam and Henry. Like, what? What are you talking about, lady? This is a problem. This is an an inevitable problem that you're gonna have to deal with. And you're just like, oh yeah, you know, seal off the building. Uh, you know, we'll we'll deal with it later. Once again, along with killing the doctor, saying we'll deal with it later, a, a very bad choice in leadership. Um, so she's not a very smart leader." Uh, so Joel and Ellie, and this, this, this episode was as a whole, pretty uneventful. Um, so Ellie and Joel, you know, they find safety, which is pretty smart in the, in a very high, in, in an apartment building with a lot of floors. Um, they go to like the 33rd floor, 33rd floor, I think, um, to sleep. And, you know, he mentions being on both sides of the ambush. That's, you know, that's something he said in the game. That's how he was able to recognize it. And he puts a little sound alarm by spreading glass all over the floor, which is something we've also seen in the game, not by Joel and Ellie, but um, by like in the sewers in part in, in the sewers in the game, there were people living in the sewers, uh, which we're going to get to in the next episode, probably. Um, I don't know if that sound trap is going to be there, but the people living in, in the sewers had, had like sound traps um, so they can know if anybody, anybody was coming. So that's something um, that people use in the world, you know, these little sound traps and stuff. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, Bill might have had a sound trap also. Um, so yeah, they're about to go to sleep. Ellie mentions it wasn't her first time uh, hurting someone, and uh, she didn't want to talk about it. Uh, a lot of people are speculating that she could be talking about Riley because, as we know, her and Riley got bit together. Ellie was immune, but we never actually get to see uh, how Riley died. We just know she got infected, but like, did did Ellie shoot her? Possibly. I don't think that was ever. I don't think that was ever confirmed. Uh, we just know Riley got bit. Um, so we learn that Joel is a little bit herring impaired on his right side from all the shooting he's also been doing, which is interesting because Sam, if you haven't read any of the uh, any of the articles and everything like that before this show was even released, they announced that Sam is deaf. Right. So um, Henry has to use like sign language and everything like that to uh, communicate with him. And that's a whole nother like. Uh, that's pretty much a quiet place situation for Sam. That's a a whole nother challenge that that Henry and Sam have to deal with in this world where there's so many dangers and threats. Sam is is deaf, right? Um, and honestly, I wouldn't mind. We're not going to get it. The same thing they did with uh, Frank and Henry. I would love if we got a whole episode of us uh, uh, Sam and Henry's backstory explaining you know just kind of delving into you know him dealing with being in this world while being hearing impaired um you know and, and and henry you know taking care of his little brother and everything like that um and leading up to the point where they meet up with joel and ellie uh and and exact and, and like showing the events of what exactly he henry did that led to him being hunted by kathleen i think that would be a that would be great, but I don't think we're going to get that. They gave that to 
Frank and Bill, but they ain't gonna give that to um, they ain't gonna give that to, to Sam and Henry. And we we kind of know their fate. Fortunately, they're probably that's another thing with this show. Like they just like these these characters are just like kind of flying by. They're fleeting. They're, they're it's probably gonna be one. I think th- and this episode is gonna be be released on Friday, by the way, because Super Bowl is um Super Bowl is Sunday, so they're releasing this episode five on 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 Friday. So this is probably going to be one episode with with uh, Sam and Henry and then that's it. Uh because then after that there's only four episodes left and there's still the university and uh there there's still uh the cannibals and everything like that and then you know the the path to the hospital and then the hospital scene. So yeah, you kind of know, you kind of see the timeline of each episode already. Um so unfortunately Sam and Henry are probably just going to have one episode um which I wish they would kind of have two. I wish several of these characters would have two episodes that de- dedicated, uh, which which they featured in, uh, which is why I think um, it, the show would have been better with like twelve episodes. But I don't know, and, and but I guess maybe budget because they did spend a lot of episode, a lot of money on each one of these episodes. Uh, so, um, so yeah, uh, oh yeah, didn't. Ellie tells Joel this joke about diarrhea. He finally laughs. You you kind of see the character development and all that stuff. And then they go to sleep. And then Sam and Henry, they uh, Ellie wakes up Joel to see Sam and Henry got a gun pointed to both of them. Pretty cool scene. That was a pretty cool scene seeing Sam and Henry like that. And, you know, give him the little, Shh, we got a gun pointed to your head, dog. We got the drop on you. Um, So, yeah. I am excited for the next episode with Sam and Henry. Um, they, uh, even though we know what's going to happen, but either way, still a good, still, I, I'm hoping next episode is good because this episode is probably the worst, the worst, the worst one, in my opinion. Like I said, even though episode three was not the direction I wanted it to go in, it was good for what it exactly was. But yeah, this episode was mid. This is what, this, was, this wasn't it wasn't it at all hopefully next episode is better um but they but you know the best episode was definitely the first then the second episode i still liked i thought it was good but it's been it it's definitely been getting worse each week each episode first was the best then it's the second then it's the third then it's the fourth it's, that's that's kind of like the, the trend that's been going so i'm hoping the fifth episode pretty much the more they deviate the worst episodes have gotten in my opinion. So I'm hoping they get back to not deviating as much as they can. And then we get back to good episodes. There you have it. So that's my review for this episode four. Let me know what y'all think about it. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell. Uh, Hit. Yeah. Yeah. Follow me on Twitter. If you're not all that good stuff, I will catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.